Hey guys, welcome back to Obsessed With Videos. And as 2023 comes to a close, let's cap it all off with the 8th Annual OWV Awards. But before we do that, let's have a look back at what has happened over this past year. During the year, I've managed to go on holiday abroad for the first time since late June and early July of 2019. And I've also had the biggest year for films that I've seen at the cinema since 2019, and even though I haven't seen as many films as I saw in that year, it's still quite an achievement in comparison to the past few years, in 2020, 2021, and 2022. The year might have started off slow for that, but as the year progressed, it increased further and faster to the point where I actually made that achievement, and needless to say, I'm proud of that. However, even though I've had a decent year in terms of going to the cinema, this unfortunately doesn't really reflect the state of the film and cinema industry as a whole at the moment. Because despite having a few major hits this year, like Barbie, the Super Mario Brothers movie, Oppenheimer, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 and a few others that were lucky, it seems as if a lot of films released this year have been flopping, and sometimes even flopping hard. Or at least, they may have just been underperformances. These include many of the recent DC films such as Shazam Fury of the Gods, The Flash, Blue Beetle, and most recently with Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. Some of Disney's recent films have been flopping as well, such as The Marvels, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, The Creator, and most recently with Disney Animation's Wish. And unfortunately, almost every other studio this year has had their own set of box office flops and underperformances. The film industry has also had to deal with other problems throughout this year too, such as the recent writer's strike, as well as an actor's strike on top of that, resulting in the biggest disruption to the industry since the COVID-19 pandemic during the first few years of the 2020s decade, a bunch of productions being delayed, and also a bunch of films having to move their release dates to a later time, ranging from a very short time like a few weeks, to a much longer time like more than a year. Although there were some delays that were kind of expected, even without the strikes, such as Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse, due to the working conditions that happened during the production of Across the Spider-Verse, but there were also some delays that would have been much less likely to happen if the strikes didn't occur in the first place, such as Craven the Hunter, which was originally scheduled for October 2023, just a few months ago but it ended up being delayed by almost a year to August 2024. We also have a few films that Disney were planning to release in March 2024, specifically the Snow White remake and Pixar's Elio, but unfortunately they ended up being heavily delayed, where the Snow White remake is now coming out in March 2025, and Elio is now coming out in June 2025 leaving Inside Out 2 to now be the only Pixar film due to come out in 2024. On top of that, I've also faced my own sets of ups and downs during the year. Even though I had a better holiday in September when I went to France, Belgium, Luxembourg and a bit of Germany, I also had another holiday a few months prior in May, in which I went to Spain and also France, and that holiday really did not go well. So much so, that while that holiday was originally planned to be two weeks long, due to how it was going and how I felt about it, its length had to be shortened to 10 days. But at least the September holiday that lasted only a week long was more enjoyable and successful and went so much better. Aside from that, I also faced a voice infection during August and early September, in which that made it harder for me to do things like recording videos. And also during late March and early April, I ended up finally getting COVID and it was an unpleasant experience all around, especially when my mother had the illness much worse than I did. Not so bad that she had to go to hospital or even be put on a ventilator. It wasn't as bad as that. It's just that while she had the illness, she was pretty much bedridden and incapable of actually getting up at first. Although as it progressed, things started to get much better for her as she started to do more normal things again in the days and weeks that followed. And luckily, my mum and the rest of my family, including myself, we managed to recover from it all fine and well. But still, 
having COVID is an experience that none of us really want to have again. So yeah, as you can imagine from what you've heard, there have been some really good and amazing moments this year, but there have also been some very difficult and sometimes even tragic moments that happened this year. However, this year could have been worse for me, and those achievements that I have made could also have not happened, or they could have happened much less, similarly to how they did during the previous few years. But fortunately, they did happen, and once again, I'm absolutely proud of them. Anyway, with all that said and out of the way, let's actually get a move on with the award ceremony. Starting with the film viewings ranking list. Just like last year, even though I've seen a much larger amount of films this year than I did last year, I still decided to combine that list with three other films that I've watched at home this year. So let's see what films I watched from each distributor. And the first distributor in the lineup is Entertainment Film Distributors. I've watched one film from them this year, which is Dream Scenario. Vertigo Releasing. I've watched one film from them this year, which is How to Blow Up a Pipeline. Entertainment One. I've watched two films from them this year, which are Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves and The Unlikely Pilgrimage of Harold Fry. Signature Entertainment. I've watched two films from them this year, which are Rise of the Foot Soldier Vengeance and The Inseparables. Lionsgate Films. I've watched three films from them this year, which are Plane, John Wick Chapter 4, and The Hunger Games The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Paramount Pictures. I've watched four films from them this year, which are 80 for Brady, Transformers Rise of the Beasts, Some Other Hood, and Planes, Trains and Automobiles. Sony Pictures Releasing International. I've watched five films from them this year, which are 65, No Hard Feelings, Gran Turismo, The Equalizer 3, and Napoleon. Walt Disney Studios Motion Pictures. I've watched five films from them this year, which are The Little Mermaid 2023, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, The Marvels, Wish, and The Nightmare Before Christmas. Universal Pictures. I've watched seven films from them this year, which are Puss in Boots The Last Wish, Marcel The Shell With Shoes On, The Super Mario Brothers Movie, Book Club The Next Chapter, Strays, My Big Fat Greek Wedding 3, and Love Actually. Warner Brothers Pictures. I've watched nine films from them this year, which are Magic Mike's Last Dance, Shazam Fury of the Gods, Alleluia, Air, Barbie, The Great Escaper, Bottoms, Saltburn, and The Polar Express. And the winner of the distributors for this ranking list is... Warner Brothers Pictures. Congratulations to Warner Brothers for having the most amount of films I've watched this year. And I think this kind of reflects on the fact that Barbie, a film that Warner Brothers released, is also the highest grossing film of the year and also their highest grossing film of all time, beating out 2011's Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. I know I've brought this up quite a bit in my videos during the second half of the year, but it's a fact that it has done so. Although this doesn't reflect on how some of Warner's other films have been doing at the box office this year, especially the DC films, but I do think that this reflects on how many films Warner Brothers released in the UK during the year, mainly due to the distribution deals they have, with Pathé and Amazon MGM Studios. They haven't released as many films as Universal have throughout the year, and as mentioned earlier, I still saw quite a lot of films from Universal this year, but not as much as I have from Warner Brothers. Now, in this year's OWV Awards, there will be three categories, so one down and two more to go, and the next one will be the Home Media Releases Ranking List. And this year, I've managed to get more than double the amount I got last year. So let's see what I got from each distributor. Starting with the independent era of Entertainment One, in which I've got one home media release from them this year, which is 12 Years a Slave. The independent era of Paramount Home Entertainment. I've got two home media releases from them this year, which are The Adventures of Tintin, The Secret of the Unicorn, and Harriet the Spy. Spirit Entertainment. I've got two home media releases from them this year, which are Marry Me and Marcel the Shell with Shoes On. 
the independent era of Universal Pictures Home Entertainment. I've got two home media releases from them this year, which are Green Zone and Emma. The independent era of Sony Pictures Home Entertainment. I've got four home media releases from them this year, which are Ghostbusters Afterlife, A Man Called Otto, Lyle Lyle Crocodile, and 65. The independent era of 20th Century Fox Home Entertainment. I've got seven home media releases from them this year, which are The Croods, Maze Runner The Scorch Trials, Maze Runner The Death Cure, Existence, The Maze Runner, Renaissance Man, and Bridge of Spies. The independent era of Buena Vista Home Entertainment. I've got seven home media releases from them this year, which are Avatar The Way of Water, Amsterdam, Strange World, Avatar, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, Inside Out, and Zootropolis. Elevation Sales. I've got 11 home media releases from them this year, which are Clerks, The Aviator, 80 for Brady, What's Love Got to Do With It, Plane, John Wick Chapter 4, Transformers Rise of the Beasts, The Nightmare Before Christmas, Hero Kin The Last Samurai, Babylon, and No Hard Feelings. Warner Brothers Home Entertainment. I've got 27 home media releases from them this year, which are Nope, Black Adam, Don't Worry Darling, Creed 3, Knock at the Cabin, The Woman King, She Said, Stillwater, The Phantom of the Open, DC League of Super Pets, Operation Mincemeat, The Recent Halloween Trilogy, Alleluia, Last Seen Alive, The Bad Guys, I Am Legend, Book Club The Next Chapter, Megan, Shazam Fury of the Gods, The Fablemans, Asteroid City, The Black Phone, The Flash, Strays, Fast X, Blue Beetle, and Barbie. And the winner of the distributors for this ranking list is... Warner Brothers Home Entertainment. Congratulations to Warner Brothers Home Entertainment for having the most amount of home media releases that I've got this year, thus making this the third time in a row where they have won in the home media releases category, because they also won this in 2021 and 2022. So congratulations for that, and I mean, it's understandable why this is the case, especially with the large amount of distribution deals that they have at the moment, including Warner Brothers themselves of course, but also with Universal, Entertainment One, Amazon MGM Studios, and Pathé. So I guess that with the amount of recent releases that I got from them this year, it shouldn't be surprising that they are on top of the food chain of this list of home media releases. And the third and final category in this year's OWV Awards is the grand return of an old category that has been almost completely refurbished for a new era. And what I'm referring to is the OWV Cinema Posters ranking list. Featuring the successor to the former Wilfred Cinema, which is quite simply known as OWV Cinema. And it looks like they've entered this year with a bang, because I've done quite a lot of posters through them this year. And now it's time that we get to see what they are from each distributor. Starting with Entertainment Film Distributors, in which I've done one poster from them this year, which is Elf. Vertigo Releasing. I've done one poster from them this year, which is The Enforcer. Paramount Pictures. I've done three posters from them this year, which are Top Gun Maverick, The Spiderwick Chronicles, and Monster Trucks. Disney Plus. I've done four posters from them this year, which are Luca, Soul, Turning Red, and Raya and the Last Dragon. Momentum Pictures. I've done four posters from them this year, which are Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, Cliffhanger, out of Time, and The Santa Claus Brothers. Signature Entertainment. I've done four posters from them this year, which are My Sailor, My Love, The Inspection, Femme, and Rise of the Foot Soldier Vengeance. United International Pictures. I've done four posters from them this year, which are Top Gun, Love Actually, Mission Impossible, and Mission Impossible 2. Netflix. I've done five posters from them this year, which are The Mitchells vs. The Machines, Arlo the Alligator Boy, Back to the Outback, Leo, and Nimona. Entertainment One. I've done six posters from them this year, which are Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves, The Family, The Woman King, 
Still Water, Dark Waters, and 1917. Buena Vista International. I've done eight posters from them this year, which are Toy Story, A Bug's Life, Cars, Finding Nemo, Monsters Inc., Ratatouille, The Incredibles, and Toy Story 2. Warner Brothers Pictures. I've done nine posters from them this year, which are Saltburn, Bottoms, The Fugitive, Barbie, Wonka, Bones and All, Black Adam, Blue Beetle, and Tenet. Sony Pictures Releasing International. I've done 10 posters from them this year, which are Sisu, Love Again, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, Surf's Up, Big George Foreman, Missing, The Equalizer, The Equalizer 2, and The Equalizer 3. Universal Pictures. I've done 10 posters from them this year, which are Polite Society, House of Gucci, Megan, Violent Night, Oppenheimer, Marcel the Shell with Shoes On, Puss in Boots The Last Wish, Ruby Gilman Teenage Kraken, The Super Mario Brothers Movie, and Trolls Band Together. 20th Century Fox. I've done 12 posters from them this year, which are Epic, Ferdinand, Horton Hears a Who, Ice Age, Ice Age Collision Course, Ice Age Continental Drift, Ice Age Dawn of the Dinosaurs, Ice Age The Meltdown, Rio 2, Rio, Robots, and Snoopy and Charlie Brown The Peanuts Movie. Walt Disney Studios Motion Pictures. I've done 30 posters from them this year, which are The Little Mermaid 2023, The Creator, Downhill, Amsterdam, Jojo Rabbit, Next Goal Wins, Elemental, Inside Out, Lightyear, Onward, The Good Dinosaur, Brave, Cars 2, Cars 3, Coco, Finding Dory, Incredibles 2, Monsters University, Toy Story 3, Toy Story 4, Up, Wally, -E, Encanto, Frozen, Frozen 2, Moana, Strange World, Wish, Zootropolis, and Spies in Disguise. And the winner of the distributors for this ranking list is... Walt Disney Studios Motion Pictures. Congratulations to Walt Disney Studios Motion Pictures for having the most amount of OWV cinema posters that I've done this year. And to round things up for this year's OWV Awards, let's add the total numbers of all three categories together, shall we? So for starters, there have been 39 film viewings, 63 home media releases, and 111 OWV cinema posters in the awards this year. So 39 plus 63 plus 111 equals 213, which is over five times the amount I had in total last year, and over three times the amount I had in total the year before that. That's quite an achievement in recent times over there. Now, as for what the first video of 2024 will be, I'm not entirely sure what it will be just yet, so you'll have to wait and see on that. But anyway... That fully concludes the 2023 OWV Awards. Hope you have a happy new year, and stay tuned for more videos coming in 2024. See you later!